Hello traders and welcome to the second part of the technical analysis mastery series in which I'm going to teach you how to analyze market structure like a pro. So if you don't know how to draw market structure, how to do it, what is major structure, what is minor structure, how to draw your Fibonacci ranges, how to differentiate between the different time frames and everything. In this video, I'm going to try to make it all clear for you by teaching you basic market structure at first. Then we're going to jump onto some more advanced market structure concepts so that when you really put them together, you're going to gain a deeper understanding of market structure. Because in my opinion, this is the absolute foundation of every single strategy. And again, there are multiple ways to be looking at market structure, right? Uh, this is how I personally do it. So if you can get something from me, get something from somebody else and then build up your own trading strategy, then this is all I need to hear. All right. Again, this is the second part of the technical analysis master series. So make sure to go in the description and click on the link down there. So you are actually going to download your plan. And together with this, I am going to send you some more PDFs from this lesson as well. So make sure to also rewatch the first video, which is the trading plan series, right? If you haven't uh, built up your trading plan, you definitely must do so right now. So check the link in the description, get your plan, build it. And right now it's time for some technical knowledge. So let's get into it. All right, we're going to get started with an introduction to market structure and trend identification, which is pretty much the foundation of your technical analysis strategy. You've probably heard a lot of people say, I'm a price action trader, right? But again, what does price action exactly mean? Let's have a look. So pretty much price action is when people come together and they agree on a price, but that is on a massive scale right? So there is a constant decision process between what is expensive and what is cheap, right? So the market goes up, the market goes down, right? This is expensive, the market goes down. This is cheap, the market goes up, right? Pretty much there is that constant battle between buyers and sellers, between supply and demand, right? And there is nothing else. We only have buy orders in the market and we only have sell orders in the market. When they are equal, we have consolidation. When buyers are more, we have uptrend. When sellers are more, we have downtrend, right? And usually, once again, the majority will always win. What I truly believe is that the BFIs, I call them the BFIs, so banks, financial institutions, hedge funds, pension funds, all of those guys, right, that actually control the market, right? They simply have control, right? And they make the decision on the price, right? So the BFIs have lots of money so they can easily move, they can easily manipulate the market and they decide what is going on. Us, as retail traders, we have no control over the market moves, right? Even if you trade 100 lots, even if you trade 1000 lots, still you do not move the market. We are just little and we're just little dots in the grand scheme of things, right? So what our aim is, is to understand how those big financial institutions operate and simply follow their footprints, right? Because they always leave footprints behind their transactions. They cannot hide where they push the market, right? And this is why I believe price action and market structure is actually what tells us where the BFIs are going, right? And pretty much your chart is a visual representation of the transactions and the ending price at specific dates, hours, minutes, seconds. Price is always going to be the same. Different time frames are just going to represent price in different ways. So if you are on the weekly time frame, you're not going to have a lot of details. But if you go from the weekly to the 15 minute, ooh, you're going to have a lot more candles, a lot more details, a lot more fluctuations, right? But still, price is the same, right? So it went in the same way. Shifting between timeframes just provides you with a little bit more clarity on what exactly happened. And pretty much price action, again, the candles and the transactions will build market structure, patterns and footprints on our charts. And I want to give you an example. I'm just going to do, do so. I want you to think of it as a painting, right? So you have a blank canvas and then price action is the brush and die. And of course, when you take this blank canvas and put price action on it, then your final result is a chart with market structure, with patterns, with candlesticks, right? And then if I ask you who is the painter, if you paid attention, then of course it's the BFIs. They paint the market for us. So if you understand what is price action, this is gonna put you way ahead over the majority of all the traders, right? So let me give you an example. There's our blank canvas, right? So this is just a chart, but nothing, right? What is this? Well, this is price action. There are the candles, there are the moves, there are the fluctuations. The market started with going down, it consolidated, and then started going up, 
right? So this is pretty much how the market moves. And then this is just raw data. Then what you can do is you add market structure to it, right? You start marking lower highs, lower lows, you start following the flow, then you spot the reversal patterns, then you spot the consolidation as well, and you just keep following the, the structure. So this is market structure. What is even more powerful is when you add supply and demand to it, right? So where are those points of interest? Where are you going to be entering from? Where is really supply kicking in? Where is demand kicking in? What is a good entry area that you can look to get involved into a trade, right? And this is what really builds everything. So this is price action trading, but pretty much how I trade personally is I'm a master at market structure. I have combined it with supply and demand. I have a very clean entry system and this is all you need, right? And guys, tell me, please. Does this look good or does this look better? Right? So again, we don't want to be way too overcomplicating it with lots of trend lines, lots of indicators and lots of that stuff. So again, in this lesson, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it clean and of course, powerful. So let's get into market structure. Okay. As I keep saying, market structure is the strongest foundation of technical analysis, period. It is the breathing pattern of the market. This is how it breathes. It goes up, it takes a breath, it pulls back, then it goes up again, takes a breath, it pulls back. Okay. So if you pretty much understand the simplest, yet still the hardest concept of structure, which is pretty much higher lows, higher highs, lower lows, lower highs, this is contributing to 80% and even more of your profitability. I promise, right? Because in the past, I did not fully understand market structure or I understood it, but what is also very important, I want you to take note of this, is that you have a systematic way of marking market structure. Because you can be, you can always be also different. You can see, okay, this is my lower high this time, but then the next day you change your lower high to something else, right? And you constantly fluctuate between your market structure marking, okay? Market structure also illustrates who is in control, right? So if the market is buying, if the market is going up, well, buyers are in control, right? But usually the indicator... It does show you this, but you're first going to see it in price and then the indicator is going to reflect on what the price did. So when the indicators are lagging, market structure is used to identify the trend and major and minor structure, right? So then if you start understanding the, the market structure across different time frames, this is a whole new skill, which we're going to cover also for major and, mark, uh, and minor structure. So why is market structure better than anything else? Right. Why is market structure better than support and resistance and uh, like indicators and all of that stuff? I am going to show you later. And in fact, I'm just going to jump on a chart right now and show you why, first of all, market structure is better than support and resistance and trend lines. So I am right now on an empty chart, right? And it's not empty. There is something on the left. But what I'm just simply going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and plot a couple of horizontal lines. There is one. There is two. There is three. There is four. There's five and maybe, yeah, let's keep it like this, right? So what is this? Well, we can say, okay, those are support and resistance level, but did I actually see something with them? No, right? But then if I start going on the left, well, what you're going to see is the market rejecting from those levels, right? Look at that zone right there. Look at the interactions, right? The market came in, reacted. Look at this level right there. The market tapped, massively reacted. Then the market came in, tapped this one, retested this one, and then went down, right? And I can keep going on. I can go on the left where we don't have much data right there, but you can see in the past right here, look at this zone, the market tapped in, beautiful reaction. Wow, that's a powerful resistance level. Right there, look at this, how the market consolidates roughly around this level, right? So is this really subjective? Again, this is not the right way to mark, to, to mark a support and resistance, but again, you can mark it anywhere and you can just go on your chart and say, okay, this is resistance, support, support, resistance, support, resistance, right, support. And then you just get a hundred lines and you really don't understand what is going on, okay? Trend lines. How do you draw trend lines, right? So if I just stick right there with this, so do I draw a trend line like that? right? It got broken, the market still went up, okay? Then I drew it like this, it got broken, the market still went up, okay? Then I drew it like that, right? The market then does uh, like the first step, and then the second one was supposed to work, but we broke down, right? Then from the upside, how do I draw it? Like this, okay, we broke out, right? So cool, I'm going to be looking for longs on the trend line retest, the market went down and made a new lower low, okay? And I can give you many examples on this, right? This just keeps happening, right? There is an upward trend line, the market broke down, then it just starts ranging and you're like, okay, what should I do? So this is why I really believe that market structure is the key and you don't need support or resistance, you don't need trend lines. Right now, let's jump back onto the theory to see how it's actually done. So I want to ask you a question. What are the two ways that the market is moving, right? So very simple. 
In essence, the market is always buying, going up or selling, going down. There is never stillness except when we have closed markets or we have like the spread hours at midnight, right? Then the market could be still for a little bit, but it's still buying and selling. Institutions even buy and sell during the weekends. So when you have Monday open, sometimes you have huge gaps, right? Why are those gaps? Is because there were orders being transacted even during the weekend, right? So usually again, the market is either doing one of two things. It's either trending, which could be uptrend and downtrend, or it's either consolidating, which is pretty much ranging, choppy, unclear price action. And there is a rule that I want you to remember, the no overcomplication rule. So the first thing that you ask yourself in the morning when you sit in your charts is the market up, down, or sideways. And usually you can spot this within 15 seconds, right? Because it usually just makes sense, right? So the market also moves in cycles. It, it oscillates between the mean value of fear and greed right so pretty much if i just take my my pen right now the mark is going to go up then it's going to go down and it's going to go up it's going to go down right and pretty much it always oscillates between a line and especially the forex market because currencies they're not like stocks that are usually going over the long term bullish right currencies tend to consolidate over if you look at the macro time frame but within those consolidations there are multiple trends that you can be capitalizing on Okay, so remember this market moves in cycles. It goes up for a little bit, shifts down, goes down, then shifts up, goes up, maybe a little bit of a consolidation, goes down. Okay, so always remember this. So are you ready to learn how to identify structure? Let's have a look. This is going to be a basic introduction of market structure. Again, uptrend. So what is an uptrend? This is defined as market structure that is breaking the highs and maintaining the lows. In simple terms, a market that is making hard highs and hard lows. The previous or last high, which is the higher high, should always break, while the previous low, which is the higher low, should not be broken. And if I put an example right there, right, we start with a low, we make a high. This low should not break in order to maintain the uptrend, right? But this high should always break in order to maintain the uptrend, right? So again, the last higher high should always break, the previous higher low should not be broken, okay? And again, we have a high, this is the new higher low, it should not break. There is the new one. What it should do, it should go and take out the high. So very simple, and I'm sure you know this. Again, this is not. Uh, this is more like a textbook, but what you're usually going to have in the live market is something like that, right? It's not clear. You have a push, the market then starts to chop around. It gives you like internal structure. But what is really important is that you always track the market down to spot like what is my major low, what is my major high. As the market pushes and breaks structure, you track it down. This is my major higher low and it does not happen. It does not matter what happens within right there. As long as the market stays below this low, right? We are still targeting the high. And I'm going to show you why this makes sense a little bit later. So there is a, again, a price action chart. So we don't have anything right there. And what you can do is you can start drawing support and resistance. You can start drawing trend lines. You can start drawing, uh, I don't know, you can put some indicators right there. But again, how I believe the market structure is drawn or how I believe the market should be traded is like this, okay? Always mark your major structure for now with a with a thin line, like with a, with a bold line like this, right? So make it bold, not very thin, okay? Lower lows and lower highs when the market is bearish, mark them with a little bit of a red highlighter when the market is bullish with blue, okay? So there is the break of structure right there. What caused the break? We track the market back. It's this guy. We put a, a red highlighter right there and then we put a line. Here the market broke, so again, just before I continue, I take wicks as breaks, and I'm going to explain why a little bit later. Here we break up, right? Uh, we break down, actually. So here uh, you could have said that this right there was a liquidity grab because then the market just wicked it up and then continued to break down. Okay, so we have a new structure break right there. What caused the break? We, call, we track it back. It's this guy. We put this. So this is our strong high, as I'm going to teach you later. The market pulls back, break structure down. Cool. What caused the break of structure? Track it back. It's this guy. This guy comes in and breaks. So what do we have right now is a trend change. And then the market shifts uptrend. Okay. And always see how those higher lows are maintaining. Like sometimes it can wick by a little bit or maybe form equals. That's fine. It usually keeps going on until it shifts. And as it shifts, we start making. So this is our strong high right now. Push, pull back, lower high, push, pull back. This is the last lower high. So we should not break above this one, but we should break the low. Push, pull back. This is the high that shouldn't break. And have a look how perfect it is. 
it usually it's not supposed to break and this is why I take wicks as breaks because if this level is strong right there if this level is so strong I don't want to see it get broken by a wick because even if it gets taken by a wick then this to me means that okay there are um, buyers entering the market they took out this level so we can eventually start shifting up and again don't get me wrong sometimes it happens like here it happened we wicked up but then we still went down. Here it also happened. We just wick down for a little bit, but then the next candle immediately continues to, to go up. So you're like, okay, well, this was just a little bit of a liquidity wrap right there. So this is an example of an uptrend, okay? Downtrend, market structure that is breaking the lows and maintaining the highs. So exactly the opposite. In simple terms, a market that is making lower lows and lower highs. So again, here, the previous and the last lower low should always break, while the previous high, which is the lower high, should not be broken. And again, to illustrate it, there it is, right? We have a high, we have a low, this low should always break, this high should maintain. We have a low, we track it back, this is the lower high, this one should hold, this one should break, okay? And we keep going on like this until, of course, we have a trend change and the market reverses. Once again, don't get married to these uh, textbook scenarios right there. The market is usually going to be much more complex when you put candles on the line, right? So it's usually going to look like this. But as I keep saying, it's always important to track back the major lower high. So let's have a look at an example. There is a pretty big one, right? So you can actually pause the video right now, pause the video and try to mark it up, right? Just take a screenshot, go mark it up and let's compare it later. So here's my markup, right? So what I just simply do again is I just follow structure, okay? So this is where we broke. We made a new lower low. What caused the break? I track it down. This is right there. We have a pullback. In uh, my private program, we have very specific rules for actually identifying the lower highs. Because in this case, for example, here we push. This is the major high. It still did not break. Have a look how the market textbook respected this, then came in, respected this, right? Then it broke down. In this case, we have to track it back. What caused this break? right there according to me it's this one you might say it's this one some of you might say it's this one right so again you need rules what is your lower high according to me it's this guy we pull back lower high lower low there is the lower low right so we know when the lower low has formed when you have like at least two candles in the opposite direction okay and then we track it back there is the major lower high so this one should not break the market pulls back makes another break of structure right there we track it back what the most important question is, what caused the break of structure? You track it back, there it is, the market pulls back, holds below it, continues to break on. Here, there is a break of structure. It occurred exactly right there. You ask the question, what caused the break? Okay, you can say, according to me, it's this one, but you can say it's this one, you can say it's also this one. Okay, this is why, again, you need clear rules. This one, as you can see, got respected. The market gave us a pullback, massively dropped. Another pullback, massively dropped. Here you can see the level was invalidated by a very little wick. So again, according to me, this is a reversal. And then this to me turns into the major uh, low, which is a higher low. So we have a push, pullback, push, pullback. The market tried to hold and what it did is again aligned bearish on the forge. So we had this little short-term pullback. Break below again. What caused the break? It's this. We track it back. The market consolidated. Took out the low. Good. What caused this low to be taken? Tracking it back, it's this. The market came in, reacted, and reversed, right? So then what caused the reversal? What caused this break? It's this low. It's not this. It's not a valid range. It's this, right? Push. And then we just keep going, okay? And then you're going to have, of course, you can see the market is not perfect. You have like uh, ranges right there. You have ranges right there. You're going to have a bullish market overall here, but you have two very big ranges. But still, what is really important is that you always... If you have this break of structure right there and makes a new higher high, what is the higher low that caused the higher high? What caused the break of structure? You track it back, it's this guy. You draw your line and you can see perfectly, doesn't matter what we do, if we are above this guy, we expect the high to go and I'm gonna tell you why we do that later. Got taken and then we reversed. Okay, so very nice example. This is downtrend and... Uh, Another example for you. So again, pause the video and mark market structure right there. Right? So again, here, there is your structure. So I just went on and I, uh, this is on the uh, Dow Jones. So this is US 30. I just went on and marked structure. And you can see this one does not look perfect. 
Okay, we have a downtrend. We always track what are the major lower highs here. We had a very little alignment, right? But you can see the market made push, pullback, push, pullback, push, pullback, right? So if you are looking at the market from a macro perspective as well, right? You can say, ah, this is my lower high. This is my lower low, right? And then this is my lower high. Well, usually this is a little bit wrong. It's not wrong, right? But then you're missing out on all of these setups, right? They're all of these setups. Then you're missing out on this short-term uptrend, right? And again, what a lot of people tend to do is, of course, draw like very big macro structure, like something like this. Okay, which is again not wrong, because pretty much this is a this is a volatility time frame. But on the daily, this is going to be a push, this is going to be a pullback, then this is going to be a daily push, and this is going to be a daily pullback. And as you can see here, the volatility time frame starts to range, which means that potentially like it's accumulating for another move. Okay, so make sure to practice this. The final market is a consolidating market, which is very tricky, and it's defined as market structure that is failing to break both the highs and the lows, or is just throwing wicks above or below, right? Ranges, by the way, are very important because this is where the BFIs are cooking, this is where they're exchanging their orders and agreeing to potentially move the market, right? So this is where they decide where they want to go next, all right? So I want you to go on your charts right now and and go and spot like a very big move somewhere. And I promise you, before this big move, there is going to be like a period of a consolidation, right? And there is going to be usually a liquidity grab. So usually what happens is the market goes from a downtrend and then starts to range a little bit. It ranges, like starts getting a little bit sloppy. And then you have this. Okay, so what happens right there is the market is accumulating orders, is building up orders. Then there is usually going to be a liquidity grab which I'm going to teach you in the supply and demand video coming up next. And then the market just massively expands. Okay, so pretty much trading within this consolidation is very risky. If you have a consolidation on the hourly time frame or on the daily time frame, this can be a trend on the hourly or on the 15 minute, but do not trade lower time frame consolidations. Why? Because of this. Because above every consolidation, there are people that are looking to go long and there are stop losses of sellers. So right there, we have this beautiful resistance level, right? What is above this resistance level? We have people that are looking to take the breakout with a buy stop. And we have people that are already short from here and have their stop loss above. Okay. What do we have at the downside? Support level. What is below? If we break below, a lot of people are going to be looking to take a breakout, which means they have a sell stop order. And all the people that are long from here, they have their stop loss. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example right now why this is the case. Here it is, right? So again, I want you to go ahead right now and pause this video and mark the structure again. Did you do this? Pause the video. I know you're not pausing the video. <laughs> All right, so hopefully you did, right? So here you see that when you open this chart and you, you uh, let's imagine that th this price action does not exist right there. When you open this chart, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Okay, it's ranging. Yes, but there is still structure in between. However, it's not clean. Okay, but it's still, as I said, it's tradable. So this is pretty much a daily consolidation right there. So you can see the four hourly market tends to change up and down, wicks down, goes up. Yes, this is a higher low formation right there. Uh, but then the market chops again, pushes up, higher high, higher low, good, then higher high. So we had like a little micro trend right there. Then it shifts down, then it shifts back up again. You can see it's overall like an uptrend. And if you again read market structure properly, you are going to be entering into those trades. Okay, and then the market throws this little big push. So again, what I tell you guys, before a big move, you have a consolidation. You have a nice buy to trick because what is above this consolidation? There are stop losses of people that are short and there are buy stops of people that want to go long. Okay, so what pretty much happens is this. You have stop losses and buy stops above. You have stop losses and sell stops below, right? You can see how many times. So here we had a wick, the market wick below the wick. Here we have a wick, the market wick below the wick. So what is this doing? It's triggering sellers into the market and it's stopping out the buyers, right? Here we have this big range. The market makes a massive move up and then look at the expansion lower, right? And the expansion, guess what? It gives us a beautiful downtrend. So what we simply have to do is wait for the consolidation to be over, wait for the, for the orders to be taken, and then the market is going to create a trend. So this is why patience is key. 
these consolidations you don't want to trade so this is a very big consolidation and then we have small consolidations in between this is absolutely unclean so again if you see price action like this that is wiki that is not clean skip it okay so before we jump on to some examples and uh and more advanced market structure i want to share some details right mark your structural points with the highlighter too i'm going to go on the charts right now and show you detail is that wicks are breaks for me but what you can do is you can do also body breaks to me body breaks do not work right because then sometimes you had a wick break the market just massively continues while you're still waiting for your body break okay again according to me if you have um a downtrend and this is your lower high okay and if the market comes in and just wicks above it this to me is a break so what i'm going to be doing is then this is my low i'm going to be looking for a long setup because if this level was so strong it shouldn't have broken how do you know if this is going to be a liquidity grab if the market goes on and breaks the low and then you can say okay well we shifted structure up but it was technically a liquidity grab so what i'm going to do right now is i'm just going to continue following the flow down Okay, so this is for you to decide. Are you going to do bodies or are you going to do wicks? To me, wicks work great. Okay. Also, a little detail. Be aware that the trend is fully established after two highs or lows are created. Let me give you an example. Okay. What tends to happen sometimes is you have an uptrend. Okay. So what is the market supposed to do in this case is maintain this low and break this high. But what happens sometimes is you have this one break. Okay. So is this an established downtrend? No, this is just showing us a trend change, which I'm going to teach you a little bit later in the formations. This is a trend change. But what tends to happen sometimes, as I showed you in, just in the previous example with a liquidity gap, sometimes this happens. Okay, so when is a trend established is when you have this, which is a trend change, then the market pulls back, does not break above this high, which is right now our major high, and then breaks the low. So what you have right now is one lower low two lower lows right so two lows are created in this example and right now you can say okay we've made the trend change and we have confirmed the trend change by a break of structure but i'm gonna tell you i am usually very aggressive with these setups as well when i have a trend change this is again this is what people call chotch change of character this is when the character of the market changes from bullish to bearish and this is when you can potentially expect that a reversal is incoming okay but again a trend is not established before you have two of those highs and lows okay as i told you in the examples always mark your structure breaks and always trail back price to see where your lower higher higher low is and again mark it with a bold line learn to zoom in on your charts and spot all the details don't be zooming out uh, like looking at the market from a macro perspective you're not like positional traders zoom in and look at all the details major and swing structure is your main trend guidance do not confuse it with minor and substructure we are going to look at minor and substructure and in the last lesson i'm going to teach you time frames okay so minor structure forms within the major one and we're going to explore that a little bit later always take note of consolidations and ranges right do not trade them on a lower time frame than the one hourly time frame it's just not worth it if the market is consolidating on the four hourly you're gonna have trends you're gonna have 15 minute you're gonna have one hourly price action but if the market is consolidating on the hourly or on the 15 minute do not trade okay practice 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 makes perfect understanding structure is your first goal right now as a trader and then of course everything else will build up on top of it okay and of course, a gap of your understanding and structure will really hinder you from understanding the advanced concepts later, right? What I see a lot of people do is they jump on the flashy smart money concepts without actually understanding the structure, right? You start drawing supply and demand, you start doing like SMC traps, you start doing order blocks, you start doing all of those stuff. But within the foundation of that stuff, if you really carefully look at it, right, it's market structure. An order block forms when you have an uptrend and the market makes a break of structure, this is your higher low formation that is not supposed to break, right? And this is where you draw your order block. And why does this hold is because the structure is bullish and this is the higher low that should be maintained, okay? So it's not like rocket science, it's just market structure. So right now, I just wanna go on the charts and show you a real example so that you actually know how to practice drawing basic market structure. All right, here we are on a new USD chart on the full hourly time frame. Once again, exactly what I'm speaking right now is about trend identification. I identify my trend on the full hourly time frame. This is my major time frame. This is my trend time frame. Okay, the 50 minute is my minor time frame, which we're going to cover later. 
okay so here this is where we mark market structure okay so i just want to show you the the process so it's not only like examples on the uh, on the on the powerpoint um let's let's just go back a little bit like stop somewhere randomly maybe have a look well let, let's have a look here i also want to pick a little bit of a complex price action so that you actually learn something and to see how the market is not very perfect okay so here let, let's start from right there okay so there we had a break of structure how i mark my break of structure is again i have like you can see here i have a quality break that up quality breakdown 50 minute up 50 minute down 50 minute train change five one Chain change, liquidity grabs, right? So you can copy this, right? So when I do this, hourly breakup, okay? So then after this higher high is formed, once again, how do you know that a higher high is formed? Well, when you have like at least one pullback candle away, okay? So this, as if it keeps pushing, then it keeps pushing. But when it stops, you pretty much see it. You cannot miss it, okay? So then the important point to ask is, okay, what caused this break of structure up, okay? So from the high, you track it back and you see that it was actually this guy. So what a lot of uh, a lot of you will do is they're going to say, well, it's this one because this is the lowest point before the break. And this is what I did in the past. But right now I have very specific rules that are very refined. And they tell me that this is my quality break, right? So we here we went. So what I'm going to do. So we had a highlighter too. Uh, we were bullish, hard high, our low was created. So if you just track it back down, uh, this is not valid. Yeah, okay, so the valid one here was this guy, okay, so we were, this is the higher low, this is the higher high, so we were not supposed to break below this guy, we just gave a little pullback, went on and took out the high which was supposed to be broken, okay, so just that we build a story. Here, as I tell you, again, I take wicks as breaks, because if this level was so strong, it shouldn't have wicked. Okay, so what happens right now is we have a trend change on the 4H, and remember, a trend is not established yet. But what I immediately do, okay, this is my high that is that was bullish, but right now it's kind of turning bearish, and right now we have a lower low. This lower low, what caused it? We track it back, and pretty much it's this guy, there is nothing else. So this is our strong high right now, this one should hold, okay? The market pulls back, Potentially forms a lower high. And again, I told you the market is not perfect. But what are we supposed to do is we should be going and taking out the low. The market consolidated right there for five days before actually went on and broke it. So what do we have right now is a new lower low. So how do we know that the lower low forms? Well, here you have a bullish candle, bearish candle, bullish, bullish. There it is. It's formed, right? Then you track it back, right? You track it back. There is the last pullback before the break. Okay, it's not this. It's not this. It's this. So this is not supposed to break. But again, as I told you, the market moves in cycles. We had like a little kind of A, B, C to the downside. And what the market does, it breaks structure up, right? So what we have right now is a trend change to the upside. The market pushes, it starts pulling back. Perfect. What caused this break? Okay, in this case, it's not this and pretty much... Yeah, okay, so in this case, according to me, in this case, it's going to be this guy. Okay, so this is our strong low right now. So what we have, let's, let me not forget. So yeah, this was a low, but right now we made the high, right? So what we're looking for right now is for our hard low. And what I'm going to teach you later is the 50%, right? Which is usually where the market comes in before making a new high. And here you can see the market makes all of this stuff. So this is minor structure right now. And what it eventually did is it came in and took out the high. Okay, what is the structure what is the low that took out the high we track it back it's this guy okay so this is supposed to be um, our higher low formation but what happens is the market just comes in and breaks it right it didn't even react it just broke it okay this happens so what we do is we flow this is a four hourly break of structure down what caused this break of structure down it's this okay so this one right now it's supposed not to break the market pulls back right and then what it does is it breaks structure lower right so we have to be zoomed in so this is according to me a break it even broke with a body if you wish to see a body what caused this break you track it back up it's this guy so this one is not supposed to break okay and what you see happen right there is the market pulled back right there and then what it did it took out the low here technically making a new lower low which was what we wanted to see and then immediately breaking it back up Okay, so here we have a slightly tricky situation, but this is a bullish reversal. So do, are you going to... Yeah, technically it's valid to mark it from here because I'm not sure what this candle did. Did it first push down and then broke up or did it first broke up and then push down? Nevertheless, we had a couple of lower lows. Right now we have a push up. Okay, so what is the structure that caused this push up? 
it's this, but like we don't have a new har high formed yet. There is one bearish candle, no har high, it keeps pushing up. Here we have one candle only, and then the next candle breaks. So this is still not a har low formation. This one is. Okay, so this is where we actually formed a har high, which was eventually broken. This is the low that is not supposed to break. If we just mark 50%. Okay, came very, 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 very close. And yeah, pulls back, har low breaks the high, you immediately track it, what, so we made a new har high, what is the low that caused the new har high, it's this one, right, so what we see happen is again, the market does all of this stuff right there, but it stays above our major har low, that is this guy, and what it eventually does, breaks the high, cool, we have a high, bearish candle, bullish in the range, bullish in the range, okay, we definitely have a new har high, I forgot to mark my, my structure, right, so always make sure to do this, right? Mark your structure and be aware where is your major structure and your higher lows and lower highs should be with such a line right there. We broke up. What caused the break? In this case, it's not this, right? According to my rules, in fact, it's this. So after this push, the market is not supposed to be breaking below here. But what the market did is just gave us a little pullback and kept on and broke structure, okay? This push, okay, so this is a new higher high. We immediately asked the question, oops. Come on. Okay, I want to copy this, but I'm copying the other. So here, what caused this breakup? Okay, and in this case, um, according to my rules, yeah, it's going to be this case. Yeah, it's going to be this guy. Okay, so yeah, what the market does, it pulls back and immediately breaks. And here, okay, here we entered into a... Oh, I'm not going to break this down. Okay, so this is the time, guys, Okay, when we have a consolidation market. And uh, pretty much is this December. Yeah, so this is pretty much Christmas and you don't want to be trading. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, but hopefully it makes sense, right? And this works on every market. If you're trading, uh, what what can you be trading? Uh, if you're trading uh, S&P futures, right? Works the same. Go on the quality time frame. Let's have a look what is happening. Um, can we pick a nice one? I don't want to... Do we have a bearish example? Oh. Yeah, let, let's, let's do this. Okay, yeah, let, let's do this, for example, right there. So, from the top right there, we had a break of structure, what caused the break, it was this, this one immediately got broken, okay, so we got broken right there, and then you ask immediately the question, okay, what caused the break, is this guy, so this is not supposed to break, the market pulls back, beautiful, massively drops, new break of structure, okay, the market forms a uh, lower low right there, yeah, it's not valid though, and, but this one is valid, okay, so here we have a valid break lower, what caused this lower low is this, unfortunately, this one got broken, okay, so here you also have to be clear, if you have clean rules, this according to me, made a new har high, it pulled back with more than three candles, broke up, and then immediately broke down, so then according to me, this is not very clean, but it's a hourly break, okay, so we shift bearish, the market makes a new lower low, what caused this lower low, it's this, so the market pulls back, goes on, makes a new lower low. There is a lower low. What caused a lower low? You track it back. It's this. So the market should not break below it. Okay. It pulls back roughly 50%, breaks the low. Okay. What caused this lower low, which formed right there? It's this. So this one is not supposed to break. And in this case, we, yeah, we, in this case, we wicked it a little bit. Yeah, which is fine. So yes, in this case, what I'm going to be doing is because I'm very strict with my rules, I'm going to be saying, well, okay, this is a 4 hourly break, but again, just intuitively, I am going to be aware that this could be a liquidity grab, but still, I'm going to be doing this. So, what is what is the, the low that caused the break of this high? Uh, it's not this, unfortunately, so it's this, right? So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking to long from here. It gave a nice reaction, and then it broke this low, okay? So, then what caused the break of this low? It's this. This is what's supposed to be strong. Okay, but unfortunately, it also broke up. Here we have a four hourly break. Har high is formed. What caused the har high? It's this. So this one is not supposed to break. And yeah, you just keep going. This one is getting a little bit volatile, but hopefully you get the point. Okay, so right now, I don't want to make this too long. I want you to go in and practice this. And right now, after you know how to mark a structure, how to track back the major har lows, how to mark them, uh, I'm going to teach you right now some more advanced concepts, which if you put to on top of what you just learned, it's going to get much more um, powerful. So let's see.
it's time to step it up a notch and cover some advanced market structure concepts that are really going to deepen your understanding of market structure. You're going to be much more confident. And of course, it's, go it's going to give you a little bit more of a confidence when you're marking up your structure and when you're trading. OK, so the first concept we're going to uh, cover is strong and weak highs and lows. And before I really jump onto all the details, this is super simple. OK, a higher low is strong. A higher high is weak. Why? Because a higher high has to break, a higher low has to has to hold. The opposite for a downtrend. Okay. So a strong high is a high that has broken structure to the downside and has created a new confirmed lower low. So basically that's a lower high. Okay. A strong low is a low that has broken structure to the upside and has created a new confirmed higher high. So basically this is a higher low, right? A weak low is a low that has that hasn't caused any break and shift in structure, which is simply a lower low, right? And a weak high is a high that hasn't caused any break and shifts in structure, simply a car high. Okay, so we're gonna cover the textbook examples in a bit, but what we want to do, so you might want to review this twice, uh, this whole video, is we trade against and away from the strong structure, and we trade towards the weak one. Okay, so. Simply, guys, we buy from higher lows and we target the higher high. Or we sell from lower highs and we target the last lower lows. It's that simple, all right? But what is the psychology behind is that a strong structural point, which is a strong high or a strong low, will cause a break of previous structure, right? And this makes it strong. Why? Well, it's probably because the BFIs entered from there and they will likely protect that high, which is why also strong highs and lows are called protected highs and lows, right? So, yeah, we, we call them strong protected, right? Because the BFIs will not allow for price to go above or below, right? Because they will usually go into drawdown. So again, this is just a theory. It's not a fact. I don't know if this is really the case. This is what I've observed and this is what I've learned, okay? So take note of the slide. Here is an example. Okay, what it simply did this is, is just market structure. All right. This push caused the break. Then we have a pullback. So this is not supposed to break. This is protected. Why? Well, because the BFIs made this footprint, this big push up, right? So they wouldn't like to go below their order. So it doesn't make sense for them to go into drawdown, right? The market then pushes up, causes a break of structure. So remember, a strong low or a higher low is a low that causes a break of structure, okay? And this is why then we draw our bold line right there. This is not supposed to break. Why? Because it's strong. Why? Because probably institutions are entering from here, okay? The market does all the stuff in between, and again, the highs, they're weak. This is where potentially institutions will be looking to drive the price to offload their positions and take profits. Again, why do you have a pullback? So you have an uptrend, right? So why do you always have a pullback when a new higher high is made? because they take profit on top, right? So they bought from here, they pushed up, they're taking profits right there. This is why the market goes down. This is where they enter again, right? Just above the, the, strong, the strong low. They push the market up, take profits, then they go again. Okay, so again, the market moves in cycles. And exactly the same thing as with a downtrend, okay? The lower highs are always gonna be strong. Strong, strong, strong. And we always trade towards the weak ones. Right? So this is also called expectational order flow because you expect that this overall order flow, this overall bullish market structure will continue going. And again, the highs are always going to be taken until they are not. Right, And this is when you have this. Okay, The market pushes up. This is potentially a strong low. But what you start seeing is that the market is kind of giving us a little bit of a shift. There is a little bit of a bearish market structure coming in right there. But again, what really matters is where is your strong one. So as long as the strong one stays in, intact, right, you keep long, but this could be a reversal sign right there. If you really start seeing the market going down and starting to break structure against you and really trending down, then it should start being aware that it might potentially start burning up new strong highs coming from the top and then eventually break your, your major strong low. Okay, so this is just a little bit of a detail, right? When the market fails to break uh, the weak high. Okay, so here you can see the market massively breaks lower, makes, in fact, a weak low, but then it starts to shift. It starts building a beautiful market structure to the upside on the four-hour time frame. And then if this one fails, a very big detail is, is that when the first strong low fails, you don't care about the rest. All of them are going to get taken. So the market is going to take them all as liquidity because right now who is in control? 
it's the sellers in this case. And in this case, it's going to be the buyers. So be aware of these situations, right? Not always a weak low is going to get taken. Okay. There's an example. Right. So I want you to again, pause this video, mark up your structure and mark up also the strong and weak highs and lows. Did you do that? Pause. All right. Hopefully you paused. There it is for me, right? This is the 15 minute, right? This is the 15 minute. So again, check it out. Okay. Check out how I mark the structure. Check out the strong highs, which is simply the lower highs. Spot right there how this was a strong high, but it turned into weak, right? So we have a trend change. The market made a new hard high. We track it back. What is the strong one? It's this. Never broke. And then we start moving up and up and up. A little bearish alignment right there. So this turns into strong. The market pulls back. Lower high, lower low. But then we have a TC. Okay, so then we start pushing up. So study this example carefully. All right? There's another one. Again, I want you to pause the video now. Mark it up again. Spend some time, right? If you're not willing to spend some time with me to, to mark up structure, you're not going to get it. So pause. There it is, right? So take a note of this, right? So we have the, the break of structure up, the break of structure. And in, in this case, I'm doing exactly the same that I did previously, but we just built it up on that concept that the higher lows are also strong lows and they're supposed to be protected. And if a strong low fails, right? As you can see in this case, right there, we had the, where's my mouse? We had like a little bit of a chop right there, but those are valid higher lows, right? The first strong low failed. This one is going to fail. This one is going to fail. And this one is going to fail. Right, it happens like a chain reaction. This is why the most recent one is the most important. Okay, so hopefully it makes sense. Right now, the big problem for all of you, major minor structure. What's that? Okay, super simple. The main determinant of major and minor structure are time frames. It's so simple. Okay, so remember, price is the same, but time frames are just a different representation of price, providing either less or more details. Okay, so what you have is the hard time frames, which you're providing with your major, your swing, your confirmed market structure, your strong structure, right? This is on your hard time frame. And to me, as I told you in my examples before, this is the full hourly time frame. For you, it could be the daily. For others, it could be the one hourly time frame. The market is fractal, which means that the same patterns, the same market structure, the same stuff is going to be repeated across all the time frames. Okay, so if you have your major structure on your hard time frame, which is on the foh, respectively, the lower one you choose is going to be your minor, it's going to be your internal structure, it's going to be your complex structure. This is what we find on our middle time frames, which for me, my middle time frame is the 15 minute. So I go from the foh to the 15 minute. So this is the most important transition, transitioning from the four hourly time frame to the 15 minute. And then if you want to do another one for entries from the 15 minute to the one minute, but it's all the same. It's fractal, right? If your hard time frame is the is the 50 minute, right? And then your middle time frame could be, I don't know, maybe the, the three minute or the five minute, right? And then your entry could be the one minute. So I usually recommend having three time frames, and I'm gonna teach you that later. Okay. So as I keep saying, structure is literally everywhere, right? But what makes a huge difference is knowing what to look for and on which time frames. Right, it's not like it's it's very complex. You just got to be systematic with your time frames, knowing where is your major structure, knowing where is your minor structure. Okay? So it's very important that you understand first of all hard time frame direction which we just covered and major structure and then start trading uh, the major structure but zoom in on the minor one and then we can take counter trends and pro trends. Let's examine see how this is one, this one is done. Okay? So what is like you might ask why is a complex pullback and a correction? This is just a minor structure within a major leg. Okay, so if I just give you an example, there it is. This guy right there, so the blue and the, the red are the four hourly time frame. This is the, the hard time frame. Okay, so we have a push on the hard time frame, we have a pullback on the hard time frame, and we have a push on the hard time frame. Okay. Then the 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 black one is how the lower time frame, so how the 15 minute is gonna look like in this case. Right, and the 50 minute is gonna be doing this. And what is this? This is your internal structure. Okay, how do you know that a hard high is formed? Is when you have a 50 minute trend change down. Okay, and then you start marking up again. Right, so strong high, break, strong high, break, right, break again, strong high until we shift up, and that is when we start the push phase. Okay, so this is just a very simple example. 
there is a little bit more. Okay, so I want you to screenshot this chart and study it, right? So study it. I'm not going to cover it in great details because I just showed you, right? Again, uh, for you, uh, the black line in this case is the major structure that could be uh, the daily or it could be the foliage, right? But if the, the black line is the daily, then the two other colors is going to be the flowery time frame, right? Or if you have the flowery time frame as your major, then the 50 minutes is going to be your minor. You choose, okay? So as I told you, the market moves in cycles. It pushes up, it becomes expensive. There is a hard time frame supply that gives you the, the reaction. The market goes down, okay? Where does it go? To the major high low. What is this? It's the strong low on the foliage that is not supposed to break, right? So then what do you have is just following the 15 minute. Okay, so there is the trend change. So the market goes up. You go long, 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 long. Har high is formed. And then usually also a little detail. How do you know that a har high is formed on the 4 hourly is when you have a 15 minute trend change or trotch as some call it. Shifts the trend, pull back, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Taps into demand, which is also very close to the strong low on the 4H, right? Shifts the 15 minute trend change so then as i told you respectively all of these highs will fail and where are we gonna go we're gonna go towards the weak high on the foliage right and then you just continue marking your 50 minute structure up and up and up and up so screenshot this slide study it and if you just add what we just learned which is strong lows and strong highs there it is exactly the same thing repeats on the 50 minute time frame we just gotta be aware that again the black line is the foliage this is our flowerly major higher low, which is strong. This is our flowerly major higher high, which is weak, right? The market pulls back, comes very close to our major higher low, okay? And you can see here on the 50 minute push, strong low. Break of structure, strong low. Break of structure, strong low. Break of structure here, that was supposed to be strong, but it broke. So we have a trend change and then we turn bearish. Strong high, pulls back. Strong high here, pulls back. Strong high, we shift up and then respectively, all of these are going to fail. And then what we just do is follow the 50 minute trend all the way until the four hourly time frame takes out the high. And then exactly the same thing repeats over and over again. Okay, so this is it. This is the answer. It's within how you transition between different time frames. So if the four hourly time frame is, is this, right, the 15 minute time frame is going to be looking like that always. And right now I'm going to show you an example on how to practice this. Okay, so what I want you to do is go on a four hourly chart right now. If you decide that your four hourly time frame is your major time frame, and just mark structure. Okay, so here we have a massive drop. What caused this drop? We track it all the way back up. It's actually this guy is the strong high, right? The market then pulls back, lower low, comes in, makes a new lower low. Okay, what caused this lower low? It's this, which actually got broken. Cool, it got broken. What caused the break? It's this. It makes a new hard high. What caused the break? It's this. Hard high, hard low, push. Breaks. What caused the break? It's this. Right? So what then you do is you take again this black line that I showed you and you take it from every high and every low and you just link them like this. Okay? And then what you have to do, this is where the key comes in, is you go to the 15 minute time frame. But you keep the black line and it's going to look like this. Right? And this is your minor structure. This is where we broke structure on the 4H, right? How do you know that the hard high is formed? The 50 minute structure changes. There is your 50 minute pullback. You can go short. This is where the 50 minute aligned bullish, right? This is where you go all the way longs. Okay, this is where the market broke forward structure up. It continues to go up until it changes on the 50 minute. Here, like it didn't change for the first time, it changed for a little bit, came and took it out again. Then it shifted again, right? And it just keeps going, right? So then this is our major flowerly higher low. This is potentially the higher high that is supposed to be broken, right? The market pulls back right there, aligns bullish, and then what do we target? We target the flowerly high. There it is. But again, in between the black lines, you are going to have lots of structure. And this is where the strategy comes in, right? This is where you actually trade within the flowerly time frame, within the major structure, but you execute on the minor one. So again, I want you to go on right now and do this exercise. In fact, I'm just going to go on my chart right now and just show you one example because this uh, lesson is getting a little bit longer. So let's do that. All right, so here I am on a gold chart. I know a lot of you trade gold, so let's have a look at gold, right? I'm just going to start from right here, right? And again, I want you to do exactly the same that we did um, in, in the previous chart example, right? 
body brake structure what caused the break it's this okay continues flowerly so mark all of this up i am not gonna mark it i'm just gonna show you how to do major and minor you go here and you find the path to okay click on it and after all of your markups are done and also make sure to do it with the with the highlighter right so push pull back push pull back Right, so there it is. But I want you to not, not to make it like me. So mark it with the strong lows, strong highs, do everything. Okay, so then what you do is you mark the, uh, is you get the, um, where did it go? Uh, where are you past? So you find the path to, I kind of lost it. Okay, there it is. So here you, you find the path to, and then you simply link all of the, all of your highlighter uh, little dots. Okay, so we start from here. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. So what this does right now for you is it marks your four hourly major structure. Okay. So then you do this, right? So I'm doing it way too much. You don't want to do it with so much like uh, price action. You usually what you want to do is just examine one single leg. Like let's see in this example, I just want to examine this, this push and this pullback. Okay. So after you have this, you make it a little bit bolder, right? And then what you simply do, 15 minutes right and there it is as i said like uh, then you can go on and, and you can say okay i'm gonna examine this right so there is the push there is the push okay so then you drop there is my first 50 minute trend change right there so what you start doing right here is again having a look how you can trade this right and then you do exactly the same thing that you did on the 4h but on the 15 minute high high low high 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 low high 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 low high high so here we broke up down right and then you you, you, you just do all of that stuff Okay, but again, you also have to be aware where are we on the foage, right? So example, for example, here, if this is my strong low, right? And this is my weak high. Again, what I'm just going to teach you right now is the 50%. So the market gets below 50%, right? But before that, the 50 minute, right? The 50 minute kind of gave us a bearish shift here. Uh, but yeah, then gold on the 50 minute, I don't really trade gold on the 50 minute. It looks quite mad, but here we had a breakup. Right, so you can take a long here, higher high, higher low, higher high. This is where we shifted down. So uh, lower low. Yeah, what caused this lower low? It looks like yeah, it looks like it's still this. Lower high, lower low. This is where the the 50 minute aligned bullish. Right, so for the first time, and then you have higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. And this is how you trade it on the way up towards the weak high. Okay, and then you find the other one. So there it is, higher low, higher high. What happened, right? So this is where we pulled back. Okay, this is where uh, this is where, for example, the market aligned bullish. How can you get long, right? So higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, right there. Then we aligned a little bit bearish. We just came in to retest the area. The market came in aligned bullish again, and then you start again. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low again. You can see how the strong low never broken, and then you go on and making your higher high, right? So that's the secret and that's the exercise if you do this enough you're gonna master it i promise okay so once again for all the time frame mark all of your market structure diligently first with all the stuff that you can do and then you just simply go on the quality time frame and you take it leg by leg right so in this case we have this push and we have this pullback okay so you go in okay how did the push happen right so the push aligned bearish right there so how can i take a short trade on the push right and then you start marking structure well there is my lower high there is my lower low i can take a short from here right what is my major lower high in this case it's this guy take a short from here came in didn't break it take a short from here here we broke it what caused this break right it's this little guy there is another short there is another break what caused this break it's this there is another short right there then we break and here we actually form the lower low right so then the market aligns bullish right there can i take a long from here yes this is my pullback trade right then you start higher low higher high higher low higher high right then you just do this over and over again enough times you're gonna master major in market structure the biggest key for you right now is to decide what is your major what is your minor if you want to follow me my major is the foh my minor is the 50 minute and then what i do is when i mark up my minor structure right and then i say for example okay I just delete everything. Uh, this is where the 15 minute created a trend change, right? Then this is my demand zone. So what I'm going to be doing right here is I'm going to be dropping to the one minute time frame and doing exact same thing with a couple of more details. Okay, so I'm going to be looking for here for the one minute time frame to align. And then I'm going to be looking for a long setup.
Okay, so for me, it's a three step down process. Okay, so do this exercise right now back into the final advanced market structure concept. A very huge part of my trading strategy is drawing trading ranges, right? So what's that? Well, pretty much, you know, the concept of trading is to always buy low and sell high, right? And drawing a PD range, which is a premium and discount range, exactly helps us with that, right? Because that's, as I told you in the beginning, the market goes from expensive to cheap and vice versa, from cheap to expensive. And again, our aim is to know what is cheap so we can buy it and what is expensive so we can sell it, right? So we buy low and sell high. And this is, uh, I think it's best done with trading ranges. Of course, you can do it with indicators, oversold, overbought. But again, to me, price is what is going to tell you if it's cheap or it's expensive. Trading ranges exist on every time frame, from the monthly to the one minute. It's the fractal nature of the market, right? And everything that happens on one time frame, the same thing is going to happen on another one, right? Again, as I keep saying, you really have to get clear on what are your time frames. So where are you going to be drawing the ranges? Okay, what I usually do is I do four hourly ranges absolutely always. And then I'm always going to be aware of the daily ranges because what happens sometimes is like um, you have the four hourly going down and then you have the market four hourly going up, right? And then the market all of a sudden does this, okay? And then you're like, okay, well, the forward time frame was beautifully moving up. So why did it go down? Well, it's because the daily time frame had a strong high, a weak low, and it pulled back into 50% on the daily. And then the forward time frame just plummets. Okay. So if you ever get like a stop loss or a wrong direction, then go to an upper time frame and you're going to find your answer. Right. So this uh, concept of the PD ranges can be utilized on every time frame. Right. Uh, in order to increase probability significantly, okay? I use it also on the 15-minute time frame, always, okay? So again, remember, higher time frame will always trump the lower ones. So four-hourly ranges will always trump over the 15-minute ones. Daily ranges will always trump the four-hourly ones. The weekly ranges, the daily, and the monthly ranges, the weekly, right? It's like a chain reaction, okay? A uh, very important thing to note is that specific instruments do not pull back off into equilibrium, which is the 50% of the range, right? So they are very momentous. So you have to know your pairs and know that some pairs, for example, like gold, like uh, volatile pairs, like GJ sometimes as well, they just go on and push and they do not pull back to 50%. They usually do around 30% pullbacks, okay? How do we draw PD ranges? Very simple. We use the Fibonacci tool and we remove everything else. We just keep one 0.5 and minus one stats on the fit. Keep it clean. This is how it looks like, and this is how you do it. Okay, so you open like a fib retracement on trading view, and you do exactly the same stats that I have right there. Just 0, 1, and 0 0.50. That's it, right? In the middle, you're gonna have your equilibrium. This is the balance. This is where the market eventually tries to go, right? And then to potentially get into uh, expensive price and go cheap, right? So you can look at it at both ways. The market can push up. Oops, I'm just running to the examples. Let me grab my pen. So what the market does, it pushes up, right? Then it starts pushing down, taps the equilibrium, gets lower, gets into discount, right? And then from here, we go on to the weak high, okay? Or what you can also do is you can have a push. The market right now is cheap. So the 50 minute shifts, it starts buying, buying, buying until it gets to 50% and above. And then usually you're going to see the market shift down and go and attack the weak low. Okay, that's pretty much the concept and it's very easy. If you understood structure so far, you are going to understand the PD ranges. Okay, there they are. What I simply did right there is I went on and I marked all the major structure, right? And I just drew also the PD ranges. And what you're usually going to see is again, if you have a push here, the market comes in, taps 50%, goes. Here we have a trend change down. <clears throat> the market pulls back, 50% goes. Push down. 50% goes. Here you have a reversal, pulls back to 50%, goes. Reversal down, 50% goes. Right above 50%, goes. Right. So just examine it again. Pause this video, examine the example. It's very nice. Again, not always. Look in this case. Here we broke up and the market pulled back just a little bit above 50%. It's not perfect. But then the next time, we just touch 50% and we explode it. Right. So always be aware the market is not perfect. There is another good example. Right, you can see how the market is beautifully moving up, up and up and up and up, and then it just goes down and down and down and down and just keeps getting to the 50%. Right, so 50% here, 50% almost right there, above 50% here. It didn't tap right there, but then the next one tapped, 
tapped, tapped, right? It just keeps going on. Once again, go back, learn how to identify the first lesson of this video, which is just market structure. And then everything that I teach you right now is going to fall into place. So again, make sure to go on your charts and also practice PD ranges together with major market structure. Okay, because again, while as this hard high is formed, you draw the PD range, you expect the market to have 50%. And if on the 15 minute right there, you get your minor structure that is bearish, you can take sales until the 50%. And as the 50% taps, then you can expect that the market is going to turn bullish and go attack the weak high, right? So this is a complete strategy by itself. Let's now explore market formations. We're almost to the end, so stick with me, right? So what are the most important formations you should know about? Guys, you're not going to believe me. This is very simple, okay? So market structure forms different market formations, right? So those formations have been built and recognized over time by traders, and supposedly they provide us with a higher probability of success, right? But I think this is debatable because if the BFI knows that these formations work well, they can just manipulate them, right? So should we trust them? Not really, right? So there are numerous formations out there, right? And we uh, are not going to cover any of them. Why? Because remember that market formations are formed by structure itself. So if you understand structure, this is all you need, right? You don't need this. You don't need triangles, channels, raising wedges, flags, double tops, double bottoms, inverse cannon shoulders. No, it's all market structure, right? You just don't need those, right? You don't need these like pennants and stuff and all of that stuff. I promise you guys, you don't need those. So do these actually work? Yes, they do, right? This is why they're here, because they work, right? But do you really need them uh, to study them totally? Well, not really, right? Again, you can see diamond uh, bottoms, diamond tops, um, measure down move. Not really. The key is within market structure, okay? So we're not going to be covering those. There are some other things you might ask me about. What about support and resistance? I think this is subjective. It's manipulated. It can be drawn everywhere, leaving you with 100 lines and you don't know which line to, to trade, right? It can be systematized for a strategy. Once again, basic support and resistance strategy that you execute over and over again is going to work long term, okay? If you combine it also with market structure. Trend lines, I hate trend lines. Very subjective. They're manipulated a lot. They cannot be systematized because you can draw one time frame in 100 different ways, right? Triangles, channels, wedges, and other shapes, uh, good to be aware of them and to know their meaning because a lot of times those are utilized for liquidity, right? Like you have a push and you have a channel. What is this? This is a strong low. This is a weak high. What should happen? The market should go up. There is 50%. The market has 50%. But then what it does, like breaks down, breaks up, right? And then it does some funky stuff and then it goes, right? So your channel and wedge formation is completely destroyed. But what is not destroyed is market structure. The market is still going to follow the order flow and market structure, okay? So be aware of those, but keep in mind that they are always manipulated. Head and shoulders, uh, favorite formation of everyone. It is just a simple trend change or a market structure shift, which I'm going to uh, tell you right now. Okay, and this is also manipulated a lot. There are like three ways of market of head and shoulder formations. You don't want to make it too complicated. Okay, there are the three formations you have to know. Market structure shift, trend change, and structure breaks. Right? What is a market structure shift? This is when the market fails to make a new higher high and starts going down, right? Or fails to make a new lower low and starts going up. So this is your first sign that a potentially a shift can be occurring. However, as I told you, where is your... So I want you to pause this video and tell me where is the strong high and low in both of these examples. So hopefully say it's this one. And in this case, it's that one. Why? Because this is the low that caused the break of the high. Okay, this is not structure yet. A, a structure is formed if it breaks the high. Okay, so MSS, market structure shift, shows us that there is a potential sign of reversal. If this occurs in a high probability supply and demand zone on the left, then you could know that potentially the market can reverse. However, there is a, it's not very high probability. Right, because as I told you, the, the major higher low and lower high are still intact. And this is what usually happens. Right, there is a bullish example. There it is. Okay, so if you trade MSS, which I do not trade nowadays, is again because, as I told you, if this is your major higher low, this is supposed to hold. And even though the market gives you a shift, this is all just internal bearish market structure, taps the demand zone, and it just forgets about you. 
right? But again, sometimes, as I told you, this could be a first sign of the market potentially reversing. It's much better to wait for a trend change, which we're going to cover next. Okay, here is an example of a market structure shift uh, that was not uh, valid, right? So the market pushed in, it pulled back for a new higher low, then tried to push and it failed. So what this usually means to me, I'm going to teach you about liquidity in another lesson, is that this low failed to make a new high, so it's weak, right? A strong low is a low that caused the break of the high. Did this low cause the break of the high? No, so it's technically weak. What the market does, comes in, takes it as liquidity, and taps into our major higher low. And guess what happens next? We go towards the weak high, right? There's another example right there. So the market hasn't yet made a trend change, but it made the shift formation right there, right? So then it ended up pushing up, higher highs, higher highs right there. So here, the market was again bearish because it shifted bearish right there, okay? But it failed to take out the low, right? And started making a shift. Okay, so shift right there as well. Uh, do we have any others? Not really. Okay, so the shift formation, it's not very high probability. There is another one. So again, the market was too bullish coming in from here. The market pulled back all the way down, tried to push, failed, then tried to push again and failed to take out the high. And then in this case, you know, okay, well, it's failing to take out the high. It's making an MSS, right? So maybe we go down and then you can see respectively the market goes down. But you should not try to, you should not try to forecast the MSS. Please, wait for your trend change. There is my strong high. That shouldn't be broken right now because this is what caused the break of this major low, right? And there is your trade right there. Here again, massive breakdown. Okay, the market tries to pull back, fails, then tries to pull back again, and then fails to push MSS. But again, what happens at the end? Trend change, right? But then it just exploded. It didn't give us an entry. Okay, so it's Always good to be aware, right, of, of the MSS, right? But again, it's not very high probability. And it's much better that you wait for a trend change. Okay, so there is our trend change. Okay, so this pretty much signifies the first change of the trend, right? Again, remember that in the beginning I told you it takes two higher highs or two lower lows to confirm a trend, right? So in an uptrend, it is the break of the last major higher low, right? So if this is the last push, this is the last major higher low. If you break below the major higher low, trend change, right? In a downtrend, the market broke structure down right there. What caused the break? It's this. As this one breaks, trend change, right? Again, body close or wigs breaks, I take wigs, as I touched before, but you can also use body breaks above and below structure. Okay, so very simple, and I'm sure by now you know trend changes. If, you, if you've been watching my videos, uh, weekly outlook and setups, you know what I talk about. There are some examples, okay? So what we do right now is we mainly mark the TCs, right? And also the structure breaks. So have a look at this example, right? This is where we broke up. What caused the breakup? It's this. I think we actually examined this example uh, in today's video. Yeah, this is Euro USD, right? Trend change down, pulls back, lower high, breaks down, trend change up, right? Trend change down, trend change up. You got to be following those. Finally, structure break, right? This is uh, very stupid, but again, this is one of the most important formations that you should be uh, uh, taking note of is your structure break. Right, it signifies a break of the last higher high or the last lower low. Right, so if there is a structure break, then you have confirmed structure. Right, and then respectively, the higher low becomes weak. Um, structure break occurs in already trending markets after the initial TC or market structure shift. Okay, and pretty much the structure breaks show you the intention that the market is continuing in the desired direction. Right, so then we have here we have a structure breakdown, structure breakdown, then we have a trend change. Right. And then if the market continues to break up, you have structure break. You don't have trend changes anymore. A trend change happens only once. And then the structure breaks can continue for a while. Here we have the major higher low. I gave you a little example right there with a shift. So the market pulled back below 50%. It tried to push. It fails. Then this one breaks. Cool. This is internal break. Why is this internal break? Because it's still staying above the major higher low right there. But again, you can see it made one break, two break. It's starting to build a little bit of supply and then eventually it breaks. Trend change, right? And then we continue with structure breaks. And what I always want you to do is to mark your structure breaks. Don't skip them because if you sometimes skip marking a structure break like this, like I do right there, you're going to miss all the details. And one little structure break, one little trend change can make or break. Okay. So believe me or not, those are the three formations I use in my training. That's it. Actually, two, trend change and structure break. All right, simple as that. So we're going to be wrapping it up. Some details. 
always build a story, right? When you open your chart, it's all confusing. You see lots of things. Take your time, analyze the major structure, mark it up, mark your uh, higher lows and higher highs, mark your strong structure, mark your PD ranges and build a story, right? And with time, you can just make your analysis in under two minutes. Personally, when I look at the charts, it takes me like uh, 30 seconds to have a look at what is happening, okay? You will also see TCs everywhere. Are they OE co? Nope. We are only looking for trend changes at supply and demand zones and potential higher lows and higher highs or higher, low, higher highs and lower lows for counter trends. Okay, so, so say you have a push, right? An important trend change is going to happen if there is a supply on the left and you have a 15 minute trend change. What does that signify is that you have a potential reversal, right? But then if you have a trend change right there in the middle of nowhere, it's not important. Why? Because still the market hasn't tapped 50% and it hasn't tapped a demand level. Right. So again, trend changes are always seen at potential higher lows and higher highs or at potential higher highs and lower lows. OK, so if the market is potentially making a forward higher low, it's below the 50 percent. It's tapping a zone. And if you get a trend change right there, ooh, very good. That's a strong one. If the market pushes up and gives you a trend change, uh, trend change at the top. OK, higher high could be formed. OK, so don't look at trend changes absolutely everywhere. All right. And again, the higher the time frame, the stronger the trend change. Okay, so each trend change has a task on each time frame. A trend change on the quality time frame is going to determine your direction. A TC on the 50 minute is going to determine your market structure. And a TC on the one minute is going to give you your entry. Again, the market is fractal and everything that happens on one time frame repeats on the other. Right? So, up next, we have how to master supply and demand trading plus a lesson on liquidity. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you did. Are you overwhelmed? If you are, you have to rewatch it one, two, three, four times, five times. The more you watch it, the better it's going to be. Please go on, practice, have a look at my examples, pause them, draw the market structure yourself, go on your charts, practice marking up the structure, practice major minor structure, practice the PD ranges, right? Practice the trend changes, the structure breaks and everything that I taught you in this video, right? Because this really builds up the foundation for jumping onto the next lesson, which is going to be on supply and demand. But you cannot learn supply and demand. You cannot learn liquidity without mastering market structure first. So, fanatics, I hope this lesson was insightful. Let me know in the comments if it was. Leave a like and let me know if you're excited for the next lesson.